Now, the town of Shrewsbury itself is contained within a meander of the River Severn. Indeed, there's, uh, apart from where the railway is, the, the only way in is across one of the two main road bridges, the Welsh Bridge on the western side of the town and the English Bridge on the eastern side of the town. It's said within these, this meander of the river there were 365 pubs. I guess many have closed now, so that will no longer be true. But it certainly is true that Shrewsbury has the third highest proportion of pubs per population of anywhere in the UK. Another interesting, or probably not at all interesting fact, is that Shrewsbury WI produces more jam than any other WI in the country. Now, I guess it's somewhat related to these pubs, and that is... Shrewsbury has, it's, it's reputedly the most haunted town, certainly in England, maybe in the UK. And almost every pub now seems to have got a ghost story related to it. Now, there were many ghost stories when I was dry, growing up, but I can't help but think that this proliferation of ghost stories is to do with tourism and that not all of them are genuine. Now, the Boathouse is a pub that's very dear to my heart on the banks of the River Severn there. And by what what is always called the Kingsland Bridge, but I, I, I know it as, as the Suspension Bridge. Well, why is it dear to my heart? Well, it's the first place I ever had a pint. Yeah, it's a pint of Whitbread Mild for a shilling and ten. I remember it very well indeed. And yeah, he used to go in as a, as, a, as a young lad, too young, you know. Um, it's got a bit upmarket now, I have to say. Again, it's one of those places where it's hard not to imagine a ghost story about it, but I really can't find any. I remember the, the tall barman called Long John, and I'm, I'm sure he must, must haunt it in some way, but no, I can find no reference to it whatsoever. But, you know... Uh, still a charming pub, if a little bit pricey and upmarket nowadays. And now the Nags Head is a pub that I've regularly had a drink in. You know, it used to be a local of mine, I suppose you could say. And there are three ghost stories related to it. Supposedly three suicides that took place. Um, I, I think from the third floor room which juts out over the street maybe people jumped out of it i don't know one was a young woman another was a soldier heading home from world war one and one was a coachman um but the reason why they apparently killed themselves is there is a painting in this third floor room um of a prophet uh, on the inside of a cupboard door well no the story I've heard that it's a painting and it's just covered up, but yeah, maybe it is. I don't know. Um, and anybody who sees this painting, no good comes to them. They kill themselves. Now, I, somewhat friendly with the um, landlord, certainly with his sisters, and I seem to remember stories that they'd seen the painting um, and other regulars had seen the painting. Um, there's certainly something auspicious about the painting, but whether or not it's true that there were three suicides as a result, I wouldn't like to say. Now, during the Civil War, it's said that the parliamentarians used to uh, meet at the Golden Cross... Uh, and, until Shrewsbury was eventually taken by the Parliament. Sorry, the Royalists used to meet at the Golden Cross until it was eventually taken by the Parliamentarians. Certainly I know of a story that links the Golden Cross to the nearby old, the original St Chad's Church. And it's said that um, there are ghosts of monks um, uh, as a result of the monks from St Chad's coming down the tunnel but why would there be monks at a church I'm not sure about that one uh, 
But there is supposedly a, a Queen Mother's Plate which suddenly shoots across the floor for no apparent reason uh, in the Golden Cross. Um, uh, and, yeah, <laughs> it's quite, quite, quite a current one, but make of it what you will. Now, I said I couldn't understand why there would be ghosts of monks uh, at the gold, seen at the Golden Cross, because of St. Chad's, old St. Chad's was a church. But I find that it was originally a private monastery built by the, built by the um, Bishop of Lichfield. So there would have early on been monks, maybe before the Golden Cross even existed. And I also find that nearby St. Julian's was originally a monastery. So there would have been monks in this area. So I guess it's all possible. And now, the King's Head, I think, is one of the oldest pubs in Shrewsbury. Well, it, it must be. It's from the 14th century. So fabulous, fabulous old building on Mardle. But, you know, I can find no paranormal stories about the King's Head, nor indeed Mardle, and Mardle has some wonderful old Tudor buildings. Uh, but running off Mardle is Raven Meadows, and there is a story of a ghost of a milkmaid who walks up and down Raven Meadows, saying, Weight and measure sold I ever, milk and water sold I never, as she walks up and down. And I know. No more about it than that. Well, yet again, some more information has come to hand, and that is the milkmaid that walks up and down Raven Meadows was apparently disturbed when they were building the Pride Hill Shopping Centre. Or, yeah, the Pride Hill Centre, yeah. And uh, the, the builders could hear her singing that song as, as, as they built the centre. Uh, furthermore, I said there were no ghost stories animating from the King's Head. Uh, but I found find that some people do claim that ghosts have been seen in the King's Head. Uh, particularly, they can hear something being dragged along the floor of the upper floors, despite them being empty. Uh, but I know no more of it than that. One of the pubs in Shrewsbury is now known as the Hole in the Wall, but I've always known it as the Blood Tub, and I'll come to why later. Uh, but it's reputedly uh, haunted by Lady Sarah, who's meant to be seen making her way through the pub after hours, apparently smiling. Apparently, she's not a she's not a malevolent uh, ghost. Now, I, I said I knew it as the Blood Tub, and that's because it's on something known as Gullet Passage. And I'd always been told that when people were hung, drawn and quartered, they were hung, drawn and they were dragged down Gullet Passage. However, there is a counterclaim, and that is that there was a pub. Don't know if it was the Blood Tub, but there was a pub there called the Gullet, hence the name Gullet Passage. Of course, it doesn't preclude both from being true, does it? No. Now, the Prince Rupert Hotel is one of the best hotels, if not the best hotel in Shrewsbury. It's said to be where Prince Rupert had actually lived. I'm not too certain if that's true. Um, but it's certainly reputedly to be one of the most haunted places in the whole of Shrewsbury. Um, uh, many ghostly apparitions are said to animate from the hotel, including poltergeists, and people smell, hear, or get touched by things. Uh, the, the Prince Philip suite is said to be haunted by a spirit of a jilted bride. She's said to have hanged herself in the room after a groom left her on the wedding night. The scepter of a hanging woman is often seen in the room, and she's also believed to be responsible for moving objects around the room. Um, people have reported an unseen presence sitting down on the bed in the Prince Rupert suite. Uh, this is also a ghost of one of the hotel's maids named Martha, 
who, had, who has been witnessed wandering the stairs next to the Prince Rupert's suite. A medium who visited the hotel is said to have encountered her. One of the fam most famous encounters was during the filming of A Christmas Carol, when one of the uh, one of the directors of the movie was staying in the hotel and he saw a ghostly male figure which disappeared through a wall. Uh, pillows had been taken from guests and some of the guests themselves had even ca captured the apparitions on camera. Um, I don't know how true these all are. Um, but I, I, I suspect there may be some truth that, that Prince Rupert did at least stay in the hotel itself. Uh, sorry, in the house itself. Now, I said the Prince Rupert is probably the best hotel in Shrewsbury, but traditionally the Lion was. <coughs> the Lion's a grand old coaching inn of Shrewsbury. Charles Dickens stayed there, but perhaps it's most famous for being where uh, De Quincey wrote Confessions of an Opium Eater. And Madame Tussaud is also meant to have stayed there. And now there is a story of a grey lady that haunts, I think it's the, um, I think it's the ballroom. Although, although supposedly there's also a haunted toilet stall. Um, ah, and then let's see. No, Grey Lady lingers between the powder room, room and the stairs in the hotel's Adam Ballroom. Ah, I see. So it's the powder room or the ladies' toilets of the ballroom where she's said to haunt. Now, my my biggest memory of the Lion Hotel is is where I nearly came to blows with um, Nick Griffin and who I assume to be. Yeah, Nick Griffin and who I assume to have been John Tyndall. Now, I've no idea, but I know they tried to pick a fight with me because I was wearing a badge saying funk against fascism that they took objection to. Uh, the Dun Cow in Abbey Foregate, opposite the Abbey, is reputedly one of the most haunted pubs in, in Shrewsbury. And in particular, it's associated with a Dutch cavalier who's said to have stabbed an Englishman to death and he was then hung in the stables outside. Um, uh, he, he said that he knocks glasses off counters and blows out light bulbs. And he's been sighted in uniform, walking along the staircase. Um, reputedly, he's annoyed because he didn't think that he should be hung for simply killing a worthless Englishman. Now, I also remember there being a tale, but I, I think it's all bound up in that, this. But a tale about... Who, who was it? Shakespeare. Yeah, Shakespeare's contemporary Christopher Marlowe is meant to have some sort of association with the pub. And it's got something to do with the British secret, the Elizabethan Secret Service. But <coughs> I don't know, I can't work out that story at all. But I think it's connected to this Dutch cavalier, but I can't work it out. The old post office is, um, it's called the old post office because it was a, a post house, in other words, you know, where the stagecoaches came. In fact, it's at the back of the lion or the front of the lion, side of the lion, I suppose you'd say. Um, so it was an old coaching inn. And of course, because it was a coaching inn, there'd be smells of the horses, and, you know, there'd be a dreadful smell there. So um, they used to have ladies um, selling lavender so that you stick them up your nose so that you, you didn't have to smell the pungent smells. And they were known as the Lavender Ladies, but it's believed that uh, sometimes you can see the Lavender Ladies around the old post office, and certainly there's often a smell of lavender uh, accompanying them. 
Another story about the old post office is that there's apparently the body of a murdered cellar girl uh, in the cellar. And apparently a, a visitor to the old post office, a, a young shop trainee who was staying there, and he, he was he was a bit of an untidy person, but every morning he'd find his clothes that he'd just thrown around the room neatly piled up uh, and his bed sheets tucked in. When his training was complete and it was time for him to leave the inn, he thanked the innkeeper's wife uh, for her hospitality and making him feel at home, tidying up his mess. And she informed him that she'd never been in his room. And now right next to the old post office on Milk Street is um, a very, very nice mansion, Proud's Mansion it's called. Uh, and it's here that uh, a shop belonged to a Mr. and Mrs. Davies who were mill workers, whose sons, Bryn and Daniel, were abducted and locked in a room and starved to death. It's believed that all four family members cannot rest and are still searching for each other as they haunt the property. And uh, now opposite St. Altman's Church is the Three Fishes pub. And I mentioned the steeplejack um, who died climbing the steeple, climbing the spire. Apparently his name was Robin Aitchison. And although, yes, he is seen on the spire, he's also been seen sitting in the uh, Three Fishes pub, uh, chatting away with the locals. Um, and in fact, there's a couple of stories about him climbing the spire. One is that he was drunk on mead, but the other is that he was drunk on a gallon of beer um, that he drunk in the Three Fishes, having taken on a bet with local lads. This is the Yorkshire House pub. Now, I, I can't find any ghost stories associated with it, but apparently there are Halloween decorations up all the time here because of its... The home of Shrewsbury's sort of rock alternative crowd. I mean, it always was to a certain degree, although the Admiral Bembo pub was the biker's pub. And uh, strangely enough, as this young soul boy used to frequent both of them. Now, I say I could find no, nothing, no ghost stories about the Yorkshire House, and it really is the sort of place that you'd expect to have them. Uh, but what I can tell you is, you know, there is a story associated with it that, that is <laughs> rather strange. And that is that on Friday the 4th of April 1980, at around one o'clock in the afternoon, the term modern soul was first coined in this pub. You see, I used to go drinking in the Yorkshire house with, with my soul friends and we used to run a a night that played this sort of modern soul music at the Oak Hotel. And I'd just been to Pep's record shop in Wolverhampton and bought some records. And for the first time, they had 1980 written on them. Up until then, we'd called this sort of music 70s. A branch of Northern Soul, but, you know, this was 70s Northern Soul. But I said, we can't call it 70s anymore. Why don't we call it modern soul? And the rest is history from this rockers pub in Shrewsbury. Now, the loggerheads, I mean, I think its real name is the Shrewsbury Arms, but the coats, coat of arms of Shrewsbury contains three loggerheads, so hence this pub is known as the Loggerheads, and as one I've frequented many, many times, a, a lovely charm, one of the, probably the nicest pub in Shrewsbury, and, and certainly the most traditional, original pub in Shrewsbury. Um... Now, it's, it, I'm not aware of any paranormal activity that's associated with it, but its real claim to fame is it's one of the last pubs to admit women into it, and certainly there was a men's-only room uh, until 1975. Now, you might find this a bit shocking, but another claim to fame that Shrewsbury has has is Shrewsbury is the origin of the rule of thumb and what the rule of thumb meant was that a man was not allowed to beat his wife with a stick any thicker than his thumb.
And now, of course, what always happens with Shrewsbury is I do a little bit of research. I, I try and think what I know. Um, and then some new information comes up. And that's happened with the loggerheads. Um, and that is the current... Apparently, the loggerheads at one time was a brothel. And the current landlady has apparently seen men, pints in hand, queuing up the stair plates case to go to the brothel. Now, such stories seem to abound in Shrewsbury. And I'm not sure about them at all. But what I would say is, if anywhere's got to have a ghost, it would be the loggerheads. Well, I really hope you've enjoyed this vlog. And if you have, can you help me out a little? Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and then you'll be notified of future vlogs. But also hit the like button and make a comment. Uh, because these seem to be what determine the um, YouTube algorithm. And I I'm being really punished by it. So whatever help I can get from you is, is so appreciated. It really is. I'm... When I started this, I was going to do it uh, this, this section. The real magic of Java, I was going to issue maybe t every two, three months. Now it's, it's happening maybe every two or three days. So yeah, if you hit the bell, you'll hear about it. Um, and thank you so much. Thank you for listening. Really heartfelt thanks.